Through this video we will see how Valor MPI will be used to left shift a new product introduction DFM analysis from manufacturing into design. Typically DFM analysis is performed late in the design process. Typically a full pro analysis will be performed towards the end of the process but this generates a lot of issues that are difficult to fix that late in the design process. With Valor MPI now running concurrently within Expedition in VX 2.4, we can run these analysis at the different points through the design process, like component placement or routing. And therefore, when we come to the point of final release, we have something that is very manufacturable. So now in VX 2.4, we have Valor at DFM and that embedded into the design process. It now is a window that can be run directly from within Expedition and the analysis will be generated and the results put into the normal Expedition has its control. We've just run the analysis now and now we can actually look at the results that are generated. All of the analysis is, is segmented into the different areas for example etch, solder, maybe component and you can step through these issues and actually see live within Expedition as it takes you through each of the issues that have been highlighted. At this point you can decide should I correct the issue within Expedition? Do I need to change my uh, analysis and my test uh, limits to decide whether the issue is, a, is something that needs to be addressed or not? And step through those changes and decide on a case-by-case -case basis you know, which is the ones that need to be addressed and which don't. All the different checks can be highlighted and reviewed. In this particular case you'll notice we've accepted a number of VIA annular ring issues and we'll come back to that when we run the analysis again. As we move through the uh, analysis and the results we're looking at some stubs, uh, we can look at some slither analysis and again decide whether these issues need to be fixed directly within Expedition uh, or we need to adjust our, our measurements accordingly. The complete set of valid DFM analysis is possible within Expedition now. Here we have a sliver analysis where we have a potential acid trap between the pad and the trace. In that particular case we can decide to move the, the trace down to create more of a gap between it and the pad. There's also a lot of via uh, wide trace narrow pad analysis that can be form performed as well, as we can see here. So in this particular case we have a, tr a trace that's very wide, wider than the pad itself. The problem that this can cause is that it changes the thermal characteristics of the, uh, during reflow and can, can cause tombstoning and other solderability issues. There are other checks that can be performed such as solder mask and silt screen. Uh, all the, the complete set of DFM analysis can be performed within Valor MPI running concurrently within Expedition VX 2.4. When I've completed all of my analysis and I, I want to run it again, as we're seeing shortly, we're now going to fire that off a second time. That analysis will repeat, but we won't have to review the, uh, any of the uh, results that I've previously highlighted. You can see them in green here. I didn't have to go back in and automatically highlight those issues. So that's Valor MPI running within VX 2.4. From a design for test perspective, Valor DFT can also be used to left shift DFT analysis into the design process and not just the layout but as we're seeing here also down to the schematic. So here we have a design with a handful of functional test pro probes that have been added to the design but most of the nets don't have the correct number of test probes added to them. So we can take that information and export it and use that once we get to PCB layout. 
Expedition VX can import the test point requirements from a file. That file has been generated by Valid DFT. And that will then set the number of test points for each of the nets. Based on the analysis, this might be one net, a number of, net, uh, number of test probes per net, but it all can also can be zero test probes per net. If Valid DFT is determined that it doesn't need test points on a certain net, then that will save space that can be used for other uh, nets. Here we can run the automatic placement algorithms to, to set the test point requirements for a, as many of the nets as possible. If necessary, we can use manual methods to uh, add the test point to the net as well. Once complete, we can re-export the, uh, the data and now run the analysis against the design and the layout data. So we're now rerunning that analysis. We're going to pull, pick the layout information this time. And now we've got test points coming in from Schematic, our functional test points, plus the test points that have been added purely in layout. Once we run that analysis, we can then take a look at the test point uh, analysis and requirements that have been generated after the updates have been performed within layout. And we can see now that a lot of the, the nets, not necessarily all of them, but most of the nets now have the correct number of test points. So there may be still a little bit of work to do, but the vast majority of nets now have the right number of test points and see that the right number of test points isn't necessarily one. We haven't just put one test point per net, but there are nets there that have zero test points. And that is correct because we've determined that we don't need test points for those particular nets. And that allows us to maximize the test coverage for the fewest number of test points on the board.